everyone out there, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. And yes, I did indeed cut my hair, cut it myself actually. I just really missed having short hair. So cut my hair, welcome to 2020. Happy New Year. In today's video, I want to talk about how to listen to your body, how we can better listen to our bodies, especially in the world of dieting and eating habits and food and which foods are best to eat. And it's something that I have definitely talked about before is the importance of listening to our bodies. And so in today's video, I wanted to dive into that and explore it a little bit more to encourage you to listen to your body and to learn some ways to do so. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want to talk about here is to practice some intuitive eating. Perhaps you've heard of this term before and I do have a full video on it that you can watch if you want to learn more. I will leave that linked below. But what it really means in a nutshell is that you avoid things like calorie counting and dieting and kind of diet culture and instead you're respecting your body's hunger and satiety signals but also becoming aware of your body's needs so that you can better nourish your body. So there's a couple of different ways that we can start to practice some more intuitive eating and the first way here is to eat slower what happens when we eat slower is that we give our brain a chance to register that we are full so you start you start to tune into more of that those satiety signals um, so that might be that you start to notice that you are physically full uh, but you might also notice that you know you're no longer as hungry you can slow down when you're eating by taking a breath between each bite or putting your fork down between each bite and really just being present with your food and enjoying the flavors and just taking your time with it because a lot of times we feel like we have to eat everything that's on our plate or we're eating so quickly that we're wolfing down a lot more than we would have eaten otherwise another big part of intuitive eating is to stop the calorie counting and kind of getting ourselves out of that dieting mentality and feeling the need to count every single thing that we are eating and calculating all of it and trying to figure out what we need to burn off and all of that stuff. You want to throw that out the window and instead focus on how food makes you feel when you eat it. So that brings me to my second point here and that is to tune into your digestion. To notice how our digestion feels throughout the day or after we eat certain foods and also to notice what our bowel movements are telling us says a lot about the state of our internal health. Whether it's things like constipation or diarrhea, these things can let us know that maybe we need more plant-based foods that are providing us with some good quality fiber. Uh, maybe we need more water. Maybe we're having a reaction to a certain kind of food. You might need to look into it further or speak with your doctor. But something else that you can do here that is really useful is to try using a food journal. This is really helpful. I've definitely done this, especially when my gut health was at its worst. It was an absolutely invaluable tool for helping me to put two and two together a lot of the time and understanding the foods that I'm eating and how they're making you feel. Next up, let's talk about cravings and having a better understanding of our cravings and what they might mean. So first off, you know, sometimes we're craving something because we just really want it and that's that and that's cool. I, I feel you there. Sometimes you just need your chocolate. I love chocolate. We absolutely should enjoy the foods that we eat. Um, but on the flip side, it is important too to also just have a better understanding of what our bodies might be trying to tell us. So for example, sometimes we are craving certain kinds of foods, maybe a certain kind of junk food, because we're just simply hungry, we haven't eaten enough that day. Or perhaps we haven't had enough protein and fat and fiber, especially together or combined. Those three things are really important for blood sugar balance and helping us feel satiated through the day. Also other things like eating a lot of refined carbohydrates or really sugary foods can create some blood sugar imbalances which can make us crave even more sugar which actually can become quite a bit of a vicious cycle where you're eating a lot of those sugary foods and then it makes you crave them more which makes you eat them more which makes you crave them more. There are a number of other reasons why we might crave things as well. For example you might have 
have a certain food that you eat that you associate with a certain time of day or a certain activity or maybe you see or you smell a certain kind of food which can elicit that kind of craving for it or maybe there's an emotional reason for it where you're stressed out you're sad you're upset and again sometimes it's totally cool to just go for it and enjoy our food but at the same time we do want to just tune into what might it be that we feel like we actually really need um, to to maybe give our bodies what it's trying to com communicate to us. So cravings can be quite insightful. The next way to listen to your body is to take a look at your skin. Our skin is our largest organ. It's also a major detoxification organ and a lot comes through our skin and it can be really helpful to take a look at what's going on with our skin, whether it's a lot of redness or dryness or acne or eczema or some kind of inflammatory skin condition or hives. Those sorts of things can tell us a lot about what's going on inside of our body. There's a lot of different reasons why we might experience different kinds of skin conditions, inflammation, environmental sensitivity, or the products that we're using on our skin, even hormones. But the best thing that you can do here is to just take note of the signs that your skin is is showing and to even come back to your food journal if you decide to try try out a food journal for a few days or a few weeks um, there can often be correlations between the foods that you eat and the way that your skin is kind of reacting if you do want some more tips on um, healthy skin and how to care for our skin from the inside out I do have a couple of videos up on my channel on this topic so I will leave them linked below for you to learn more one of the most important things that you can do as a woman, as someone who has a menstrual cycle, is to understand your cycle and to really familiarize yourself with it, know it inside and out. You wanna know things like how long is your average cycle length? How heavy are your periods usually? Uh, how do you feel when your period is approaching? Or how do you feel when you're in the middle of your cycle, in your fertile window? Um, of course, this is gonna be different if you are on the birth control pill, but generally speaking, you want to understand these things. Every single month, women go through a very specific kind of cycle with a few different stages that are involved, and it can and does absolutely impact how we feel. Our menstrual cycle can impact our digestion, or maybe some acne, or a lower mood, or maybe a really high sex drive, or different changes in the fluid that you produce as well. So there's a couple of different ways that you can familiarize yourself with your cycle that I want to talk about here. And the first one is to use some kind of period tracker. My favorite one is Clue, which is an app that I have on my phone. And really all I do is every time I get my period each month, I plug it in there. But by doing this, you'll start to understand how long your cycle is on average. Like even right now, do you know what day you are on in your cycle? question for you. Some of us don't, you know, I, I know it wasn't until I was in my earlier 20s that I actually started to really learn more about this and start to even track my period. I've been doing it now for about seven years. And as a result though, I am so, you know, in tune with my cycle and with how I feel throughout the month as, as a result and even really in tune with my fertile window and all these things can really make a big difference in, in our lives and understanding our bodies better. And another way that we can learn more about our cycles is by using a fertility tracker. So for example, Daisy, this is one that I have mentioned in the past. It is not birth control, it's just a fertility tracker, but it's a basal body temperature thermometer so you're able to see the different fluctuations in temperature throughout the month and have a better understanding of you know, fertile windows and that kind of thing. So really insightful, I'll leave those things linked down below. And lastly, do a mental check-in. This is great to do, especially if you're feeling down or sad or anxious. It's just doing a bit of a mental check-in and asking yourself, how am I feeling? What's bothering me? What's on my mind? What's weighing on me? Am I stressed? Out. This is a huge one here. A lot of the time we are really, really stressed out and it's having an effect on a number of different areas of our lives. Our digestion can be impacted by stress, our skin, our hormones, inflammation levels. And you know, a lot of us are really stressed out. A lot of us have a lot on our plates, but I think what happens is that sometimes we totally overlook it. And I think that one of the reasons why it's often overlooked is because it seems to be the norm nowadays, right? It seems to be something that 
a lot of us are dealing with, it's just part of life, it's just being stressed out all the time. But the reality is that it's not normal to be chronically stressed. But when we do a mental check-in, when we get clear on how it is that we are feeling, we're better able to take the steps necessary to improve how we're feeling, whether that's making a certain kind of decision or having a conversation with someone that we need to or reaching out, asking for help, taking time off. Even things like caffeine can definitely cause us to feel really anxious, myself included. That's why I don't drink coffee. Uh, actually, for the month of January, I'm going completely caffeine free to do a little experiment on how it affects me mentally and emotionally. So doing a mental check-in, definitely a great way to listen to your body a little bit better. So that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this topic insightful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel as well for weekly videos. And I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.